So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning, and we will begin with the ringing of the church bell. So we want to welcome everyone to our January 17th uh, worship service. I want to share some announcements with you first. Uh, we'd like to invite everyone to participate in a card shower for Nancy House. Uh, her 60th birthday is next Sunday, the 24th. Uh, just a reminder that Juniata County Meals and Wheels is not delivering meals for January and February, so we will not need to bake any cakes for them. Today is Special Offering Sunday. Uh, at Lost Creek, we are collecting our Joyful Noise Offering. And uh, normally, we would uh, be passing around the uh, metal bucket today and pouring our change in <laughs> and making a joyful noise. And that money would go to uh, the discretionary fund to help with uh, heating bills for people. And at McCoysville, we are collecting our Meals and Wheels offering, and we'll continue to support the pro project even though it's um, not operating at this time because it will be operating. 
Treasurers, please remember to turn in your financial reports to Cheryl today and uh, take your check registers and receipts to the church office for the financial review committee. The budget committee will, Lost Creek budget committee will meet after worship today. Tuesday, uh, starting the 19th at 7 p.m., uh, I will be leading a four-week Bible study using themes from The Lucy Show. Uh, you can come into the, the fellowship hall wearing a mask, or you can join us by Zoom. If you want the Zoom link uh, or telephone number to call in on, uh, give me a, you know, let me know. The Lost Creek Session meets Wednesday at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, we receive Serena Dries into membership of the church through the sacrament of baptism. And the Lost Creek Congregational Meeting is coming up January 31st after worship. Uh, Dana has uh, global mission envelopes for the women at Lost Creek Presbyterian Church. And we are down here collecting cans of soup and uh, activity books for the food pantry and for the nursing homes. Of course, you can always get uh, wise cards from Tom Heckman. And 5% of the face value of the card goes to the um, discretionary fund. Don't forget, if you, especially if you were uh, worshiping with us at home, if you would like to support the ministry of the church, you can go to Lost Creeks or McCoysville's webpage and click on the Give Now button and give electronically. Or you can mail offerings to uh, Lost Creek or uh, Presbyterian Church or to Barb Hutchinson. Are there any other announcements? As we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God, our meditation music is being provided by Max Henry from McCoysville on his guitar. Thank you, Max.
The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. Our scripture focus for our worship today is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 53 to 65. Listen now to the word of the Lord. After they arrested Jesus, they took him to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. The Lord always blesses the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. O God, our teacher and guide, draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So let's wish everyone peace be with you. So peace be with you and also with you. Go ahead and share the peace with one another. And uh, worshiping with us at home, uh, Casey, uh, Tessa, Hazel, and Reese, Kathy, Linda, Ann and Barry, uh, Barb and Rich, Brittany, Kathy from McCoysville, uh, Noreen Thomas is uh, one of our uh, worship leaders online, Uh, Nancy from McCoysville, Jackie, Sue, uh, let's see, Chris, Barry, Melinda, uh, Lindsay, Dana, and Ben, Kate, I think I mentioned Ann and Barry, Melinda, Steve, you're watching with us. <laughs> Robin, Alicia, and Cheryl's watching with us. <laughs> well, uh, that's some of the people worshiping with us at, uh, at home, and they wish you peace, and uh, peace be to all of you worshiping at home. Let's uh, join together in singing softly uh, two verses of ble- hymn 139, excuse me, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
So as I mentioned uh, in the announcements, uh, we are going to do a four-week uh, Bible study. Uh, we're going to watch an episode of The Lucy Show. This is not I Love Lucy. This is The Lucy Show, where Lucy is a widow. Uh, she, her last name is Carmichael in the show. And uh, she, in, in the episodes we'll be watching, she uh, works for a banker as a secretary. And uh, we're going to be looking at different themes that we can draw out of that and what scripture has to say about those themes. So today we're talking about schemes. The uh, Cambridge Dictionary describes a scheme as an organized plan for doing something, especially something dishonest or illegal that will bring a good result for you. So when we think of, there's different ways of defining what a scheme is, but one of the ways that we think of scheme, especially when it relates to the Bible, is a scheme is doing uh, something dishonest. Perhaps you're breaking the law. Perhaps it's illegal. Perhaps you're just lying to people. Uh, maybe you're conspiring with people. But you are doing something dishonest in order to get something you want. So, as I mentioned uh, in, the, in the Lucy show, uh, in this particular episode we'll watch on Tuesday, uh, Lucy wants to buy new furniture, and her banker boss will not sign a loan for her to get the, um, the furniture she wants. And so she's trying to figure out a way that she can get the money. And uh, she finds out that Bailey's Baked Beans is starting to sell in the stores, and their advertising campaign is, if they're not the best baked beans you've ever had, we'll give you double your money back. And this sets off the uh, wheels going in Lucy's brain. Let her explain uh, her scheme to you. All we have to do is buy one can of beans for 25 cents. Take it back, and we get 50 cents. 50 cents? That's right. Double your money back. Oh. Yeah, and then we take the 50 cents and buy two cans, bring them back, and we get a dollar. Then we buy four cans yeah. and we get two dollars yeah. back. Eight cans and get four dollars. Sixteen cans, we get eight dollars. Wait a minute, Lucy, don't you think the math store is going to get suspicious if we keep bringing back more and more cans of beans? Oh, we don't go to just one store. I got it all figured out. Now, look at this. Look at this map. Yeah. See all those pinheads there? Yeah. Well, all those pinheads are marking the stores in this whole location. Well, what are these two pinheads down here? Those two pinheads are us. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Operation Bean. So uh, Lucy decides to do something that is a little dishonest. Uh, buying beans, uh, saying, oh, they're not the best beans I've ever had, and asking for double her money back, but continuing to do it over and over with more and more cans. Um, so what is uh, the attitude towards schemes? Well, the world says schemes are OK as long as, one, you don't get caught, Obviously, you're being dishonest to scheme, so you don't want to get caught or else that would be bad for you. You wouldn't get what you wanted. And two, it's better if the people you care about don't get hurt. You know, somebody usually gets hurt in a scheme. Bailey's Baked Beans Company is going to get hurt by Lucy's scheme. And the world's attitude is schemes are okay. After all, you want to get what you want. Just try not to hurt anybody you care about. But what does the Bible say about schemes? Well, one, the Bible says that we are not to be acting in dishonest ways. We are to be obeying God's laws, uh, including things like do not lie and do not cheat and do not steal. Uh, the Bible also says that we are to love our neighbors and our enemies. In other words, it's not right for your actions to hurt anybody, uh, even if you don't like them, even if you feel like you've been wronged by them. But there's a, th a third issue that Christians uh, have to pay attention to, and that is that 
we are supposed to trust God's plans for our lives. And if you have to do something dishonest, and if what you're doing to get what you want has to hurt somebody else, are you really trusting God's plans for your life? Or are you putting your wants and your desires before God? Now, a, a good example of this in the Bible is King Herod. Last Sunday, we um, looked at Epiphany Sunday when the wise men came to visit the baby Jesus. And we remember that after they left, they were warned by an angel not to go back to Herod and tell Herod where the baby was. And that's not the end of the story, is it? Herod sees this baby Jesus as a threat to his kingdom. And he doesn't care what he has to do to eliminate the threat and to protect his kingdom. And we know in the story, when the wise men don't return and tell him who the baby is, he sends his guards into Bethlehem to kill all the babies to and under to try and get rid of this threat. Here is somebody who is definitely scheming to hold on to what he wants, his kingdom. He doesn't care if he murders people to do it. He doesn't care who is hurt by it. But also, he doesn't care that he's going against God's will and God's plan. He went to the religious leaders and asked them, where is this new king supposed to be born? So he knows this is part of God's plan for his people, and he doesn't care. He wants what he wants, and he is going to get it, and he doesn't care what schemes he has to do in order to get it. But what happens if what you think you want is what you think God wants? And what if what God wants, the only way to, to accomplish it, is to scheme? And that's what we've got going on in our scripture lesson this morning, the arrest and trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin. The religious leaders see Jesus as a threat. Now, he's a threat to their authority because people are flocking after Jesus and choosing to follow Jesus. They're listening to Jesus' teachings instead of the religious leaders, and Jesus is criticizing the religious leaders. So he is clearly a threat to their authority. But it's more than that. They also see Jesus as a threat to God's law. For them, God's law is at the center of their covenant with God. Obedience to the law of God is necessary to please God. And while Jesus says he upholds the law, he seems to care more about love and mercy and compassion than he does the literal keeping of the law of God. And they see that as a threat to the very law of God to the people's obedience to God's law, to the covenant that they have with God himself. They also see Jesus as a threat to the temple. The temple is the place where God meets with his people. It's the place where people come to interact with God, to be close to God, to be made right with God. And suddenly, here comes Jesus who claims to be speaking for God and sharing what God is really like with the people. And people are now coming to Jesus to get close to God and to learn how to be made right with God, not going to the temple. So they see Jesus as a threat to their authority as, lead, as teachers, to the importance of the law of God and the covenant, to the importance of the temple, and how we maintain a right relationship with God. And they feel like they have to defend God against Jesus. And so they begin scheming. And we read in the fall about the, the numerous encounters Jesus had between the religious leaders and, um, and Jesus in the, uh, in the temple area the week before Jesus was crucified. 
and they sent one person after another to question Jesus, but it's a scheme. They don't want to know what Jesus' answers are. They want to trick Jesus into saying something that will either turn the crowds against him, and then they don't have to worry about his, him anymore, or that will uh, cause the Romans to arrest him, and that solves the problem too. But Jesus is able to avoid their scheming in their questions. And they've still got to figure out a way to get rid of Jesus. And so the uh, religious leaders uh, pay Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. They arrest him. They bring him before the high priest, the other priests, the, uh, the, the lawyers. And they have this trial. And they've got to find something that they can pin on Jesus that can give them the death penalty. And so one witness, and then another, and then another, and then another, comes forward with false testimony against Jesus. And it would seem that if all these people are saying he's bad, obviously he must be bad. But the Bible says you, have to, you can't uh, convict somebody unless you have at least two witnesses who agree. And Mark tells us none of the witnesses can agree. They're all saying bad things about Jesus, but none of them are, are the same. Even when they talk about Jesus' comments about the temple and it being destroyed, and him building it up in three days. Even then, they couldn't make their, wit their testimonies agree. They had nothing to prove that Jesus was bad and that he deserved death. And so finally, the, the high priest says, you've heard all this testimony against you, even though the high priest knows none of it can be admitted. He says, what do you say? And Jesus is silent. Give us an answer. Are you or are you not the Messiah? And when Jesus uh, confesses that he is the Messiah, the Savior God promised to send, the high priest declares it blasphemy. And because he, the high priest says it's blasphemy, and everybody heard Jesus say it, they can all convict him on the charge of blasphemy. And they can turn him over to Rome to be crucified. But even then, they still have to scheme because the Roman governor, Pilate, knows that uh, Jesus isn't guilty of their, their charges, and he wants to set him free, and the, they have, the uh, religious leaders have to convince the crowd to cry out for Barabbas to be released instead of Jesus. But ultimately, they get their way. Their schemes work. Jesus is arrested, Jesus is crucified, Jesus is buried. And they think they've gotten rid of this threat to God. But of course, what we realize through Easter is that Jesus wasn't a threat to God. Jesus was God's plan of salvation for the world. It was through Jesus that we could come to God and receive God's forgiveness and to be claimed as God's children, and to have God living with us day after day, in their belief that they knew God's will, that they wanted to do God's will, and that they needed to make God's will happen, they actually worked against God and against God's plans. And I think that's important for us to remember. You know, God is not the author of sin. God is supposed to be all-powerful, right? So if it is God's will and God's plan, can't God make it happen? And if we find ourselves thinking we know God's will for somebody else, for our nation, for our own lives, and we find that we have to act in dishonest ways to make it happen, and if we find we have to act in ways that hurt other people to make it happen, then we really need to ask ourselves, is this God's will or is this my will? Am I trying to make what I want happen? 
Now, there is some good news in the story about this scheme against Jesus, and that is that Jesus did not remain dead. God raised him from the dead on the third day, proving God's power over sin and death, proving that Jesus Christ is our Savior. And that's an important thing. I don't believe that God wanted the uh, religious leaders to crucify Jesus. As I said, God is not the author of evil or of sin. But it does prove to us that God is all-powerful, that God's plans cannot be destroyed, and more importantly, that God is able to redeem even our sinful, broken behavior and use it for God's purposes. And that is good news. That means that if we look back on our lives and we see ways that we have been or still are scheming, where we are acting in dishonest ways to make our, our desires come true, and we're acting in ways that hurt other people just to benefit us, when we realize that perhaps we are confusing our will with God's will, and we, when we discover that, we do not have to quit. Instead, we can confess that what we are doing is wrong. We can turn away from those uh, scheming actions. We can even work to correct the wrongs that we have committed, and to heal the brokenness in our lives and in the lives of others. And we can do that knowing that God will help us because God is able to redeem sinful and broken people and situations and use them for his good. Amen. This morning, as we uh, pray for the different churches of Carlisle Presbytery, we are praying for Christ Presbyterian Church and the Reverend Ellen Crawford True. As we pray for the congregation, pastor, and session, let us ask for perseverance, wisdom, and compassion in these challenging days. Also, we have some very important people. Um, Tomorrow is uh, Steve Musser's birthday. Did you remember? Okay. <laughs> um, then on Thursday is Isla's birthday. Yay. And uh, Saturday is Sam's birthday. Sam, are you going to come up here so we can uh, sign happy birthday to you? No, I'm really into this. Uh, I'm You're into, into the uh, social distancing. Very good. Okay. And, of course, next Sunday is um, Nancy's birthday. And if you can, help... Uh, you know, help with the card shower. Uh, also, if uh, you are worshiping with us at home and you have um, a birthday, we are going to sign happy birthday to you. And uh, let us know, and we'll be glad to add you to our VIP list. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? All right, let's uh, sign happy birthday. God bless you. We will uh, share specific uh, people that we are praying for after the worship service. Um, and if you are worshiping with us at home, uh, use the um, Facebook Messenger uh, to send us a message and we, uh, of any prayer concerns you have, and we will pray for those at the end as well. Um, obviously, uh, some of the general things that we are praying for this week is there's a lot of anxiety over the potential for violence. Um, We've heard about this, you know, violent activities happening, perhaps happening around Capitol buildings and, of course, in D.C. in time for the inauguration. Uh, but I also saw a post that some churches are being warned that they are now targets of violence because they uh, supported Biden and his policies instead of Donald Trump. So there's a lot of anxiety in our nation and in our world, and let us pray for God's peace for that. 
Uh, let's pray that we can come together as a nation, uh, not one party or another, but uh, come together as one nation and uh, work together for the good of all. There's a lot of uh, anxiety about the vaccine. Uh, some people anxious to get it and not sure when they when and how. Other people, you know, afraid to get it. Um, there's the uh, continuing spread of the COVID virus and uh, the people who have been dying from that. Uh, and there's uh, nations around the world that are rattling sabers, uh, trying to get attention for themselves and threatening uh, war. So let's pray for peace in that situation as well. Can anyone else, does anyone else have any general prayer concerns that we want to share today? All right. Let's uh, bring our concerns to the Lord in prayer. Uh, each petition ends, Hear us, O God. I invite you to respond. Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you with hearts that need to be open toward your word and your love. There's so much around us that tears at us and causes us to tremble. Keep us ever mindful of your presence and the hope that you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Guide us, we pray, as your church struggling to spread the good news. Keep us focused on the mission and ministry to which you have called us and lead us forward. We know, Lord, that there will often be bumps and holes in the road along the way. Save us from dwelling on them and make us secure in the goals you have placed before us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear our prayers for all who are in need, who need your tender touch and healing in their lives, those we name before you each day and those who are known only to you. Here, especially the prayers we lift to you in the silence of this time. Be with those who mourn. May we all remember the love and grace that your faithful people have brought to our world and the promise of eternal life we have through faith in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all your people. We see to always be at odds with one another. Guide our leaders and those of other nations that this world might truly be as you created it to be, a world of peace, hope, and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. These are our prayers, together with those that lie on the hearts of all your faithful people, which we offer to you in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's uh, sing softly the uh, first and second verses of hymn 77, Savior, again to thy dear name we raise.
listen to our uh, postlude music now. And uh, we're going to change our praise song. We had been singing, uh, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Um, we've learned the signs for Awesome God, and so we will sing, uh, sing that through twice. Uh, let's just refresh our memories. So it's our, and then God, you bring your hand down from the sky. God is an awesome, raising the roof. Awesome God, he reigns. So you make R's with your fingers, and then act like you're controlling the reins of a horse. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. You make the R and point to your head. I don't know why. With wisdom, power, show your muscles, and love, give yourself a hug. Our God is an awesome God. So let's uh, sing that through twice and sign that through twice. if you would stand for the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.